Good afternoon and uh, welcome. It's February 7th, 2019 and uh, we are in our second week. We just completed our second week of session here in uh, Springfield at the State Capitol. This is State Representative Robert Martwick coming back to you with uh, something that I've done in the past and that's been well received, a Springfield update. Uh, tell you about what's going on in your state capitol. You know, it's it's important stuff that goes on down here, but the local uh, news spots are, are not real uh, keen on always covering all that stuff. So uh, I wanted to make sure that I, I return with these things, keep you abreast of what's going on. And th there's some interesting news. We're two weeks into the session, and we're really just getting all of our bills filed and just starting the process of starting to move them through the committee. But that hasn't stopped some big changes from happening. Um, everyone's aware that Governor J.B. Pritzker has taken office and he came in with a very aggressive agenda. He campaigned on the idea that he was going to get stuff accomplished and he is not letting moss grow under his feet, I will tell you that much. Um, and in fact, uh, one of his corner, the cornerstones of his campaign issue is he said he would, if elected, work to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. And um, that fight for 15 I will tell you, made a big step today. So the $15 an hour minimum wage today, just about uh, an hour and a half ago, a vote was held in the Senate, and out of 60 votes in the Senate, 59 votes in the Senate, it received 39 votes. Um, a supermajority of the Senate has voted to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. I assume that we will take this up in the House next week, and if this passes, it will go to the governor's office. And Governor Pritzker has requested he wanted to accomplish a $15 an hour minimum wage before he gave his budget address, which I believe is February 20th. So, so we are taking up a vote on this, and we are going to, I, I believe that $15 an hour minimum wage is, is coming to Illinois. Um, so what does that mean? What does it look like? So we're going to put up a graphic here on the screen, and uh, I'm going to tell you about what it looks like. Um, so. Uh, what you can see, if you're looking at the screen right now, is that it, it, there you see these four boxes across. It talks about the year, and, and we're going to be stepping this up. We're increasing the state's minimum wage to $15 an hour over a six-year period. So effective January 1st, 2020, the minimum wage would go to $9.25 an hour. That's that first column. Focus on that first column. As of July 1st of 2020, it would go to ten dollars an hour and then there would be step ups every year after that so every january 1st uh after that uh there would be a step up so january 1st 2021 11 dollars an hour 22 12 dollars an hour 23 13 dollars an hour and obviously all the way up to january 1st 2025 when the room wage will reach 15 dollars an hour now if you look in those other two columns you will see tipped and youth um, these are tipped wages, so there's a lower wage for people who are receiving tips, um, lower minimum wage. So you see that goes up to $9 an hour. Um, and there is a also a youth wage uh, that will go up to $13 an hour eventually, but that trails the adult minimum wage, as we call it, or the base minimum wage. Um, and, and this is a big difference, right? So uh, what, we're, what we're doing is, is that um, you've got the current minimum wage is $8.25 in Illinois, and for tipped employees, it's $4.95. So um, $8.25 to $15 an hour in the minimum wage, $4.95 uh, to $9 an hour for tipped employees. And uh, workers under the age of 18, it's currently $7.75, and that's going to $13 an hour. Um, there is, uh, I think we can take the, the graphic off and we'll come back to me here. Um, other things that you should know, there is a, a business credit in this. So businesses will uh, receive a credit um, uh, to help them absorb the, the change in this for small businesses. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, we heard some testimony in committee yesterday about this, and we've heard from economists who have repeated over and over again. You know, when you get to people who do this sort of economic analysis, they can prognosticate about what will happen if it's done, and yet, Pretty much every instance where a minimum wage has been passed, there has been positive economic benefit. There's never been negative economic benefit associated with it. So this is, you know, the belief that we're operating upon is that we're going to improve the, the wages for minimum wage workers. 
and we're talking about typical workers making four to five thousand dollars a year more and the people that are at the bottom they have things that they just have to spend on this will get put back into the economy and generate the economy and we heard people experts experts testify that that's what has happened where it's been done in other states and it's what's going to happen in Illinois so we're very excited about minimum wage that's coming so so that's the update about what went on this week because remember there's a lot of bills that have just been filed and they're just going to start in the committee process uh, but the last thing I want to do is give you a little update um, and I'm going to do this a little bit more often I'm, I'm going to give you a little update on a piece of legislation uh, that I filed. I'm filing a lot of bills this year and I hope to move a lot of them so I wanted to talk about uh, some of those bills so the bill I want to talk about today House Bill 827 uh, was just filed and this will create an elected board for the Chicago City Colleges. So again, um, if you're familiar with my work on an elected representative school board for the Chicago Public Schools, very similar, right? So in, in, in a lot of parallels here, right? In, in, in Chicago, we have the only appointed school board for K through 12 education. We also only have, we have the only appointed school board for uh, our community college system, and that is the City Colleges of Chicago. Um, and so, just for the same reasons that I think we should have democracy in our elected representative school board for the Chicago Public Schools, I believe the same for city colleges. And the structure is very much the same. So again, if you're familiar with my bill, I would break the city into 20 districts, and each one of those districts, local districts, would elect a member to the school board. So 20 members of the school board. And, and, and why 20, right? So if we break it down into districts, the smaller we get on the districts, the less likely that we have to be worried about the influence of outside money. You can never eliminate that in politics, but the, the, the smaller the district and the more members we have on the board, the more that your involvement in the community is going to matter more than outside money. You'll be able to knock on doors, do some grassroots organizing, and your community involvement will mean more than how many mailers you send out. However, we do have one board president elected citywide. I think this is important because a citywide election helps bring media attention, and media attention to the race will then help voters understand the issues that the city colleges is facing, and hopefully make informed decisions when you go in to vote for your school board member. These will be four-year terms, and uh, that's the basic structure of it. Now, people might say, I understand the issues around CPS, but why city colleges? Why should I want a, an elected school board for city colleges? Well. What I would tell you is that recently um, there was uh, a change to city colleges under the Emanuel administration that made a drastic change to the way education was delivered through community colleges. And the best way I would describe it is, is it took community out of community colleges. It took community out of community colleges. So community colleges have always been that place for people who are either just graduated from high school and they're looking to get those core education classes under the belt or adults returning to education. But the idea was that it was located nearby. It was convenient because for these people, you didn't pack your bags and, and get a dorm room down at the University of Illinois. You stayed in your community. You're probably working. You need access to education that is nearby. City colleges realigned all of that. And the problem was is they made certain curriculum inaccessible. If you wanted to take nursing classes, you'd have to travel to one part of the city. If you wanted to take classes in, in business, you'd have to travel to another part of the city. And as a result, we've seen uh, enrollment rates at, at city colleges go down. Um, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Is this realignment need more time to play itself out? What I do know is that we should all have the ability to weigh in through the course of elections so we can decide whether or not that is a good future for our city colleges. Should it be sort of a mini university system where it's spread out all over the city and people have to traipse all over the place? Or should it be what community colleges were designed to be, which was access to education for adults, post-secondary education uh, in your community, easy access to? So, um, so that's the idea behind the bill that I'm pushing, uh, HB 27. Of course, Love to hear your thoughts on $15 an hour minimum wage, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on an elected school board for city colleges. So as always, feel free to leave a comment here, or as most of you know, I, I'm happy to engage and respond to comments here. Um, and so comments or questions or criticisms, you can also at any time feel free 
to reach me at rhettmartwick at gmail.com or reach out to my office, 773-286-1115, and Judy will be happy to make an appointment for you to come in and see me. So that's it. We'll be back next week on Tuesday. I'll be updating you about more bills that I'm filing, and uh, feel free to uh, weigh in. But until then, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.